It was an important day in the yard. Everyone was busy and excited, making notes and taking photographs. A special visitor had arrived and was now the center of attention. Who is that? whispered Thomas to Duck. That, said Duck proudly, is a celebrity. A what? asked Percy. A celebrity is a very famous engine, replied Duck. Driver says we can talk to him soon. Oh, said Thomas, he's probably too famous to even notice us. Just then, Gordon arrived. Huh, said Gordon. Who cares? A lot of fuss about nothing, if you ask me. And he steamed away. Later that night, the engines found that the visitor wasn't conceited at all. He enjoyed talking to the other engines till long after the stars came out. He left early next morning. Gordon was still complaining. Good riddance, he grumbled, chattering all night. Who is he anyway? Duck told you, replied Thomas. He's famous. As famous as me? Nonsense. He's famouser than you. He went a hundred miles an hour before you were even thought of. Huh, so he says, puffed Gordon. But I didn't like his looks. He's got no dome. Never trust domeless engines. They're not respectable. I never boast, but I'd say a hundred miles an hour would be easy for me. Goodbye. Duck took some freight cars to Edward's station. Hello, called Edward. That famous engine came through this morning. He whistled to me. Wasn't he kind? He's the finest engine in the world, replied Duck. Then he told Edward what Gordon had said. Take no notice, soothed Edward. He's just jealous. He thinks no engine should be famous but him. Look, he's coming now. Gordon was running very fast. His wheels pounded the rails. He did it, I'll do it. He did it, I'll do it. Gordon's train rocketed past and was gone. He'll knock himself to bits, chuckled Duck. Gordon's driver eased him off. Steady, Gordon. We aren't running a race. We are, then, said Gordon, but he said it to himself. Suddenly, Gordon began to feel a little strange. The top of my boiler seems funny, he thought. It feels as if something is loose. I'd better go slower. But it was too late. On the viaduct, they met the wind. It was a teasing wind, which blew suddenly in hard puffs. Gordon thought it wanted to push him off the bridge. No, you don't, he said firmly. But the wind had other ideas. It curled round his boiler, crept under his loose dome, and lifted it off and away into the valley below. Gordon was most uncomfortable. The cold wind was whistling through the hole where his dome should be, and he felt silly without it. At the big station, the freight cars laughed at him. Gordon tried to reach them away. But they crowded around no matter what he did. On the way back to the shed, he wanted his driver to stop and fetch his dome. We'll never find it now, said the driver. You'll have to go to the works for a new one. Gordon was very cross. I hope the shed is empty tonight, he huffed to himself. But all the engines were there waiting. Never trust domeless engines, said a voice from somewhere behind him. They aren't respectable.